today I will be re-simulating Connor McDavid's career, but at the end of every season, we will be switching games, starting with NHL 16 and ending with NHL 23. Year number one, starting on NHL 16, Connor McDavid sits at an 83 overall, and he will be playing on the first line with Taylor Hall and Jordan Eberle. Edmonton would miss the playoffs after finishing with a 37, 38, and 7 record, earning 81 points for 24th in the entire league. The Flyers and Kings would tie for the most points in the league with 111, but it would be Philly winning the tiebreaker to claim first place. Connor McDavid would earn 19 goals, 47 assists for 66 points in his first year, while Taylor Hall would lead the Oilers in points with 77 and lead them in goals with 37. Hey look, a nice young Nail Yakupov. I can't wait to see how his career turns out. Tyler Sagan would lead the entire NHL in points with 94, while it would be Alex Ovechkin leading the league in goals with 50. The Chicago Blackhawks would continue their dynasty winning the Stanley Cup in five games against Pittsburgh in the finals. Patrick Kane would lead the playoffs in points with 26 and lead it in goals with 13. Can't say we really see this anymore. Corey Crawford wins regular season MVP. Eric Carlson wins the James Norris Trophy. Connor McDavid picks up Rookie of the Year winning the Calder. Corey Crawford also grabs playoff MVP, the Vesna Trophy, and the William M. Jennings Trophy. While Bergeron continues his dominance in the franchise Selkie department. Year number two now in NHL 17, Connor McDavid would start at an 88 overall, and he will be playing on the first line with Milan Lucic and Jordan Eberle. The Edmonton Oilers would once again miss the playoffs, finishing with a 36, 40, and 6 record, earning 78 points for 26 in the entire league. And the New York Rangers would capture first place in the entire league with 109 points. Connor McDavid would lead the Edmonton Oilers in points with 73. He would have 19 goals and 54 assists. It would be Jordan Eberle leading the team in goals with 29. So the team did not even have a single 30 goal scorer. No wonder they did so bad. Patrick Kane finishing with 106 points to lead the league while also leading it in goals with 56. I guess we're getting an exact repeat as the Chicago Blackhawks would win the Stanley Cup, beating the Pittsburgh Penguins in the finals in five games. Kane and Taves tied to lead the playoffs in points with 27. Patrick Kane led it in goals with 15. Patrick Kane wins regular season MVP, while Brent Burns captures the James Norris Trophy. It would be William Nylander winning Rookie of the Year. Jonathan Taves grabbing playoff MVP. Braden Holpe grabbing the Vesna and the William M. Jennings. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Roman Polak should be winning the Bill Masterton. And Bergeron captures another Frank J. Selke. Year number three, jumping into NHL 18, Connor McDavid starts the season at a 93 overall. And he will be playing on the first line with Leon Dreisaitl and Milan Lucic. Edmonton would make the playoffs for the first time today with a 46, 30, and 6 record, earning 98 points, finishing sixth in the entire league. Connor McDavid leading the team in points once again with 82. He had 34 goals and 48 assists. His 34 Four goals was also good enough to lead Edmonton. The closest was Dry Settle at 22. Sadly, Edmonton would lose to the San Jose Sharks in six games in the first round and the Nashville Predators would win the Stanley Cup, capturing their first ever sweeping the Columbus Blue Jackets in the finals. And I don't really want to talk about the playoff stats because 81 overall Patrick Maroon led Edmonton with five points, him and Strom tying. It'd be Ryan Johansson and Brendan Dubinsky leading the NHL in playoff points with 20, with Max Pacioretty leading the league in playoff goals with 11. Alex Ovechkin would capture regular season MVP, while Roman Yossi would win the James Norris Trophy. Brock Besser wins Rookie of the Year, while it would be Pecorine grabbing playoff MVP MVP, the Vesna Trophy, and the William M. Jennings Trophy. John Merrill, pre-mustache, wins the Bill Masterton, while Bergeron is once again your Frank J. Selkie Trophy winner. Year number four on NHL 19, Connor McDavid would sit at a 94 overall, and he would be playing on the first line with Leon Dreisaitl and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Edmonton would finish with a 37, 35, and 10 record, earning 84 points, finishing 23rd in the entire league, obviously missing the playoffs. It would be the Tampa Bay Lightning finishing first place in the entire league with 115 points. Well, this is just disrespectful. Connor McDavid only finishes with 65 points to lead Edmonton, and he only scored 26 goals, which was also the Edmonton leader. Very, very, very low numbers, especially when you remember he's a 94 overall. Speaking of 94, that's the amount of points Vladimir Tarasenko got to lead the entire NHL. He'd also lead the league in goals with 49. And for back-to-back -back years, the Nashville Predators are your Stanley Cup champions after beating the Boston Bruins in six games. Philip Forsberg leading the playoffs in points with 24 and leading in goals with 10. And even though Tarasenko led the league 
in goals and points. It would be Nikita Kucherov winning regular season MVP. Eric Carlson would grab the James Norris trophy. Pecorino would once again win the Conn Smythe trophy for playoff MVP. Connor Hellebuck would win the Vesna trophy. The Sergei Bobrovsky winning the William M. Jennings trophy. Year number five, now in NHL 20, Connor McDavid is a 95 overall. And he'll be playing on the first line with Leon Dreisaitl and the real deal, James Neal. And the Edmonton Oilers are back in the playoffs after finishing with a 42, 34, and 6 record, earning 90 points for 14th in the entire league. And the Toronto Maple Leafs finish first place with 123 points. McDavid leads the Edmonton Oilers in points. Once again, he had 93. He had 35 goals and 58 assists, which would make him the Edmonton goal-scoring leader, Leon Dreisaitl being the closest with 29. John Tavares on the Toronto Maple Leafs led the entire league in points with 102 and led it in goals with 62. When it came down to the playoffs, EA thought it would be really funny if Edmonton lost to Arizona in six games in the first round, and they thought it'd be even funnier if Colorado beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in seven games in the finals to lift the Stanley Cup. McDavid and Dreisaitl both showing up for these playoffs. Dreisaitl with eight points, McDavid with with seven they both had three goals while austin matthews led the entire playoffs in points with 32 and tied with tavares to lead it in goals with 16 i don't know what i just did but hey it's dustin bufflin john tavares would go on to win regular season mvp john carlson capturing the james norris trophy philip zadina wins rookie of the year while the con smythe winner is everyone's prediction the yost i think it's tyler yost could be wrong there the vesna trophy would go to freddie anderson while Corey Crawford would capture the William M. Jennings. Finally, in our simulations, Bergeron is dethroned as Ryan O'Reilly wins the Frank J. Selke. Well, he definitely deserved it. 82 overall Tyson Yost. I was kind of close. Finished on top of the Colorado Avalanche in playoff points with 22, as well as in goals with his nine. Year number six, NHL 21, Connor McDavid sitting at a 95 overall once again. And he will be playing on the first line with Leon Dreisettle and Kyler Yamamoto. 97 points earned, a 46, 31, and 5 record. Edmonton would finish ninth place in the entire league. While the Carolina Hurricanes would finish first place with 110 points. McDavid had 97 points, 41 goals, and 56 assists. While he would lead Edmonton in goals, Dreisettle would actually lead them in points with 99. Alexander Ovechkin would lead the entire league in points with 112, while also leading in goals with 60. And our playoff performance today is not cash money at all. We would get swept by the Vegas Golden Knights in round number one, meaning we still haven't won a series at all. And to make matters worse, the Vegas Golden Knights would move on to win the Stanley Cup, beating Carolina in six games. Nikita Kucherov, Mark Stone, and Alex Petrangelo all had 24 points to lead the playoffs. Why would be Pacioretty and Kucherov tying to lead the league in playoff goals with 13? Alex Ovechkin grabs regular season MVP, while John Carlson grabs another James Norris trophy. Kaprizov, without a profile picture, is your rookie of the year. Your playoff MVP is Max Pacioretty while Braden Holpe grabs the Vesna Trophy on Vancouver with O'Reilly now winning back-to-back -back Frank J. Selke trophies. And in year number seven on NHL 22, Connor McDavid remains a 95 overall and he will be playing on the first line with Jesse Pugliarvi and Leon Dreisaitl. The Edmonton Oilers would finish with a 46, 25, and 11 record earning 103 points for fourth in the entire league while the Colorado Avalanche finished with 113 points for first place. And McDavid would finish with 102 points, 40 goals, and 62 assist he led Edmonton in points but he did not lead it in goals as Drysdale had 41. McDavid and Drysdale carrying this team just a little bit 102 points for McDavid 100 points for Drysdale the next closest was Kane with 56. Patrick Kane and Connor McDavid both tied to lead the league in points with their 102 it would be Kaprizov now with a profile picture finishing with 48 goals to lead the league. Well we finally did it we won a playoff series sweeping the San Jose Sharks in round one but then Edmonton would lose in round two to Vegas once again in six games, and the Toronto Maple Leafs would beat Vegas in the finals in seven games to lift the Stanley Cup. McDavid only won goal in 10 playoff games. He had 10 points. Dreisaitl led the team with 11. Mitch Marner leading the entire playoffs in points with 29, while Austin Matthews led it in goals with 14. And it would be Patrick Kane winning regular season MVP. Victor Hedman grabs the James Norris Trophy. Trevor Zegers wins Rookie of the Year, while Jack Campbell wins the Conn Smythe Trophy. Darcy Kemper winning the Vesna Trophy and the William M. Jennings Trophy. Paul Bergeron captures another Frank J. Selke Trophy. Year number Number eight, our final season back on NHL 23. Connor McDavid sits at a 97 overall. I guarantee he won't even have his best season of the day. And he'll be playing on the first line with Leon Dreisaitl and Zach Hyman. With a 46, 31, and 5 record, earning 97 points, Edmonton would finish ninth in the entire league. 
while the Colorado Avalanche would claim first place with 120 points. Connor McDavid doesn't even hit 100 points. He would have 98, 39 goals and 59 assists, leading Edmonton in points and in goals. With 108 points, Alexander Barkov led the league in points and was the only 100 point getter this season. Doesn't make any sense to me at all, but I'm not even gonna argue it. What's the point? Alexander Ovechkin led the league in goals with 50. Well, a pretty rough day, if I do say so myself. Edmonton would lose to Vancouver in round number one. Vancouver going all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals where they would lose to the Rangers in six games. Kemi Panarin led the entire league in playoff points with 32, while it would be Kaprizov leading it in goals with 14. Markov would capture a regular season MVP. Joe McCarr would grab the James Norris Trophy. Your Rookie of the Year is Ken Johnson. Artemi Panarin would win a playoff MVP. Georgiev wins the Vesna. Allmark wins the William M. Jennings. And Bergeron wins the Frank J. Selke Award. And now the fun part where we compare our simulation Connor McDavid versus the real life Connor McDavid. So starting with our simulation, he would play 820 games, score 253 goals, earn 423 assists for a total of 600 and 76 points which is way under a point per game the exact number is 0.82 points per game which is not great especially when you compare it to how he did in real life he would play 569 games score 303 goals earn 547 assists for a total of 850 points meaning even though he played 251 less games in real life compared to our sim he still had more goals more assists and more points and the exact number turns out to be 1.49 points per game pretty close to being double what we got in our simulation so the next time you see someone comparing Connor mcdavid to a video game character tell them they're wrong because he's even better than a video game character but that is going to be it for me today thank you everybody so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next one peace